furry gang you can see that I've made a mark here I don't think I know that it's not going to be deep enough I just want to get it cut enough right now just to clear so that I can take care of making my spacers and get the engine secured then I can come back and relieve that enough so that the oil filter can be installed and removed so for now I'm going to lift the engine up out of the way we're going to get this cut out and I'll fast forward through all that for you up up and away boy that's so nice just right in and out of there gorgeous love it all right get out of the way uh oh the camera's attached engines out of the way. Let's commence to cut. have to be pretty right now just got to get that engine in there right all right let's get that engine set back down inside there reorganize my drawers a little bit sorry about the heater noise chilly in here. If you wanted me to work in the cold, uh-uh, not happening. <laughs> Alright, come on back over. Those took out enough. Get that oil filter off. Huh. Awesome. Alright, next step. 
get my drive shaft attached. So I'm going to do some measuring, take a couple of these guys over on the lathe, cut them down, and we'll get those stuck in there with a the fiber disc, and we will return shortly. Alright, we've got the disc attached to the drive shaft end of it, and I wanted to just remind you guys, if you haven't seen my video on uh, engine installations, uh, these really thick washers that are used to install if you look at them the way they're stamped out there's a rough edge on one side and a smooth edge on the other always put the smooth edge to the fiber disc on both sides and you want to sandwich two of these heavy washers on either side as I've done I don't know if you can see but there is a washer on either side there the reason I put this on first is so I can lower the engine back down and get a more accurate measurement. Now these, when I cut them down, um, I can make a nice smooth chamfer so I don't have to worry about having a washer on this side. So I'll just have a washer on the back side of it. So stick around. Alright gang, my light's being grumpy with me. It's going to shut off. Uh, but it already shut off. That's funny. You guys can still see. I've got a gap up top. I've got a bolt down in the bottom just to line things up and that drive shaft is lining up beautifully. But here poses the question, how in the world do you get in to measure that tiny little gap in there? Well, it's fortunate that I'm a machinist and I've got machinist tools. It's a number of different things I can use. There's a bore gauge. I can get that in there and just let the springs let go and then measure this distance and see what it is. Or I can use this set of inside feelers. So that's what we're going to do. If I can get my hands in there, I think what I'm going to do is adjust it and set it in there. You notice the ends of those are bent out so I can get a more accurate measurement. There. Just get it between my fingers. A little too much. And I want to give myself just a hair. And that's what I've got there. Hear that? Because right now I've got the engine pushed all the way back. I can still go <coughs> forward with the engine. So with the engine all the way back, or excuse me, all the way towards the front of the tractor, I want just a little bit of play. That's a little too much. Open these up a little more and stick them back in. There we go. This is my measurement. So I will simply measure these either with my micrometers or my calipers and cut two of these to size. So now it's lathe time. Squaring it up. I use that tool just to mark. See the, I don't know if you can see the line I put in there or not. This will sometimes do a good bit of chattering. We'll see if it's going to chatter. I need to get my little chip brush. Uh oh. Houston, we have a problem. 
I know. I gotta get everything back far enough. There we go. Now we're ready. Get my chip brush. A little bit of alcohol on the chip brush. Just helps reduce the chatter. And alcohol seems to work best when cutting aluminum. And the chip brush holds a good bit of alcohol. So I don't have to do a whole lot of reloading. Alright. Here we go. Too much. That's number one. We still have to trim it down just a hair. I cut it a little long on purpose. Let me show you the finish. Most, most cutters, you won't get that nice a finish. But as long as you've got it good and sharp on aluminum, you want to drop your cutting, it, got cutting edge below center and use that uh, alcohol soaked chip brush and it does real good. I'm going to get this other one cut down, get them cleaned up and ready to install. Look, I remembered to turn the camera on for this one. Be back. He has been staring at me the whole time I've been working on this 7117. You know I don't like to have my shoulder looked over when I'm working. Alright, where are we at? Well, I had an audio problem, imagine that, with the lovely GoPro setup and my knee pads on the other side so I'll grab a different one okay where are we at spacers are in and mounted and good and tight engine is mounted to the base plate good and tight mounting plate mounted to the tractor Good and tight. And hard to see. Plenty of clearance to get the oil filter out. Awesome there. So, <laughs> what did Zippo forget? I forgot something kind of important. Let's look here. There's the oil filter. There's, there's the oil drain plug. And we'll come over here. Here's where you check the oil. Here's another oil drain plug. It's kind of hard to see. Um, what's supposed to be on there? A pipe to drain your oil. <laughs> so I gotta take that thing all apart and take it back out. Drain the oil. But that'll give me a good chance to make sure I've got the frame cut far enough for the oil filter. So. I was about five steps forward because the engine is now part of the tractor and uh, we can go ahead and hook gas up to it fire it up and watch it move under its own power just a few inches 
You guys game for that? It's going to be loud. I'm not going to put a muffler on it. We have a hot rod engine here for a couple minutes. So let me get that set up and we'll get back on it. Hang on. All right, gang. I can't move it far because I've got a static battery down there. I'm not using the battery up here. So let's see if she'll start. And if she'll start, we'll. Uh, I'm just going to quickly lift the choke in there just so I can control the choke. Let's see if she'll start. Then we'll see if she'll move back and forth. Don't see any reason why it won't. Okay, check, check, check. I've got the fuel solenoid on. That's choke. That's off. And it wants to stay off. That's good. Okay. Ready? Contact. supposed to do and I've got the flipping microphone backwards again I hope you guys heard me okay now you ought to be able to hear me so like I said engine has to come back out because I didn't install the oil drain but that's no big deal there's my oil filter and I have to drain the oil out so that'll let me know if I've got I think I already said that let me know if I've got enough clearance on the oil filter so, Sean, look, progress. Now we've just got the wiring to get done and fix the deck, and this one will be ready to go. I know, long time in coming, but you have been a patient man. All right. I'm going to end it. I'm going to end part seven right here. The 7118, as it is now, is running under its own power moving under its own power cool i think so it was a long road to get it here and it is i corrected the clock it's 5 30. i'm tired i'm hungry so i'm gonna go ahead in the house do some editing so i can give you guys an actual tractor related video and I know you guys have been jonesing to see what's going on with the 7117 so I got a lot done today as I had hoped to do and even though I'm tired and my neck is a little sore a little more sore than it was before I started it's not too bad so yay raw almost there Sean almost there won't be long won't be long all right gang See you on the next one. Please, give me a solid. Wash my hands for me. Or give me a thumbs up. Later. <laughs>